Welcome to Web Patrol Wednesday with my dad, Dr. Joe Tranquilla. Thanks, Everett. Today we're going to take a look at Le Pont Mirabeau by Jeff Enns. Earlier in this series, I had a chance to chat with Jeff, and I'll share some of that conversation with you today. Jeff is, of course, the Canadian Chamber Choir's composer in residence, and we've had an opportunity to perform many of his works all across the country. Uh, when we talk about a famous setting of, of, a, of a poem, here is the Guillaume Apollinaire uh, text, which uh, many Canadian choirs, probably uh, beyond Canada as well, but a lot of Canadian choirs know the setting by Lionel Donnet. Um, I'm assuming you knew the Donnet setting before. You yes, <laughs> and that's yeah, that's where I, that's where I, the only place that I'd ever heard that I, that's where I heard the text from. Yeah, the text speaks of romance and of nostalgia, and it centers around a specific place in the center of Paris. Jeff had an opportunity to travel to Paris with his wife a few years ago, and he was able to track down this particular bridge. I had never been to Paris, and I really, really wanted to go to Paris, so this was kind of my my sonic impressionism phase or whatever. This piece is a wonderful example of some of the trademark elements of Jeff's writing. These beautiful stacked chords, the almost tuning up of the orchestra that happens. And it's perhaps not surprising that Jeff is a string player himself. It's like the orchestra tuning up. Like there, there are those moments where, again, you stack those four I stack by fifth, yeah. And it's because I've been tuning violins and cellos for my whole entire life, you right. know, it's... It's stuck in there. <laughs> but it's so perfect because of the way that you let different voice parts uh, and different, you know, string instruments uh, influence those different moments. It feels like it's right in the sweet spot of each of those voice parts. And I think that that's obviously a sign of a, a really fabulous composer. Of course, as a bass myself, I really appreciate that the basses are given the melody in measure five. And it's a really wonderful introduction uh, after we have this beautiful setup with the upper three parts, this sort of undulating um, figure, sous le pont mirabeau, sous le pont mirabeau, and then the basses enter with the melody. This has always been one of my favorite pieces by Jeff, and I think what is most striking to me about this is the way that he layers the parts and allows some really expressive moments to happen from one voice part singing pianissimo, for example, in measure 31 with the alto, Vienne la nuit sonne l'heure, and then the tenor joining, the soprano, and the bass. It's a really beautiful moment. The shifting meters and the triplet rhythms also allow for a very fluid and organic setting of the text. There's a lot of opportunity for us to enter into the sounds of the French language. And that's another reason why I think this is a really successful setting. Even when there's a figure which is accompaniment, um, it's beautifully crafted so that it's really lovely to sing. Um, but very often it just is used to cradle or support another part which has material that really needs to come to the fore. For example, the line that moves beginning in measure 41, L'amour s'en va, l'amour s'en va comme la vie est lente. Et comme l'espérance est violente. The way that chord opens up and at the peak, at measure 46, we really have this amazingly supportive quality of sound coming from the lower parts. And then, very suddenly, but so beautifully, uh, everyone joins together in quite close harmony. Vienne la nuit. Um, and that's an example of the way that Jeff really uses contrast to great effect as well. The Sopranos have a particular moment in measure 58 where they launch up to a high G flat. Ni temps passé, ni les amours reviennent. And the delicate quality required in that line at a mezzo forte. He's not uh, being unkind to the singers there. He's allowing them to really open up. Um, but the delicate quality required in that line is going to be a particular challenge, um, but so rewarding when uh, the sopranos in your choir can get that. This piece is published by Cypress Choral Music and is a part of the French language series, La Serie Enchantée. For details on how to order this music and to check out more great repertoire, be sure to visit cypresschoral.com. Huge thanks to the CCC composer in residence, Jeff Enns, for his contributions to today's episode. That's all for now. 
See you next Wednesday for more great Canadian repertoire. Next time on The Muppet Show! <laughs>